I think it would fear to say he's eccentric. Slightly eccentric okay. in an interesting way. Others have said that before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it must be true. And he's going to do some poetry, and it includes reference to things I don't like, like snails and whatever. He's a biologist. So let, let me introduce Greg Craig from the town. Good afternoon. My name is Graham, but I go online by the name Armadillo Zenek. So if you uh, search online, you'll find me and various stuff I've done. Uh, I'm going to recite some poems today. How's that for sound? Is that, is that okay? Cheers. Okay, so... This, uh, this first poem gives a glimpse into my life as a scavenger of roadside ordnance. This is an incident that happened near Haymarket Station on Wednesday the 2nd of June last year. It's called Found on Ground. I found three washers in the street and with three nuts to match. How neat! As I was cycling on my bike. That's the sort of thing I like. I saw them lying there, unfixed. At first, my feelings were quite mixed. Were they there meant to meet some need? Would I succumb to unjust greed? I scanned the railings there above them to check if I dared to love them. But I saw no bolt or bit where washers or their nuts might fit, no sign that they were intending work as adding on or mending, evidently parts just left, and of employment there bereft. So, I adopted them as mine, so black japanned and looking fine, and decided to take them home, three nuts, three washers of my own. Into the pocket of my jacket, I didn't think they'd badly black it, though picked up off of the street, I lifted my collection neat. I cycled on. My pocket jangled. My soul, nut and washer spangled, lit with joy to think I'd found something useful on the ground. If I see things as worth recycling, I will pause in my bicycling. I often stop. My rate's erratic. That's why I'm such a full attic. Thank you. <laughs> you enjoying your food? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> this next poem is called The Sausage Who Lived in a Pie. There once was a sausage who lived in a pie. And how did he live there? Nobody knows why. And what did he do there? That, no one can tell. And how do I know? Cause, I knew him quite well. <laughs> Okay, Alan has mentioned snails. Uh, on, loosely on the theme of travel and places, I'm often impressed by how high snails seem to climb up walls. I think, why? Where do they think they're going? So this, uh, this poem is in honour of that. It's called Pedal Power. Now, here's a snail. I call her Ace because she has ventured into space. The space upon this street sign where she's at least four feet in the air. I should add a foot, I suppose, because each snail bears one of those, or rather say, upon its foot, each snail is born wherever put. In any case, look at Ace Saw. Did Gagarin do so much more? Did Armstrong, when he placed his boot in moon dust, beat her? The point's moot. Did Valentina Tereshkova outdo Comrade Snail? Give her a back. No astronaut nor cosmonaut beyond our mosque has done aught. Terrestrial environment, above it all, Ace boldly went. Earth's surface she has left behind with courage to adventure find. Now look, this snail has found her way out into cyberspace, I say. Eyes of the world are on this Ace as she pursues her slow space race. This next poem was suggested, as several of my poems have been, by 
people's comments on Facebook is when they put their status up. Uh, in this case, it was a friend Pauline who put, Pauline hates it when her biscuit falls into her cup of tea. You know that if you dump biscuits, they occasionally disintegrate before you open them. Pauline hates it when her biscuit falls into her cup of tea. She berates it. Why do you risk it diving so olympically? Pauline, very nearly crying, soggy biscuit, damply lying, cradled in a pool of brew, splutters out a word or two. Dear, tis not just any tea, but highest aristocracy. I may to you seem weak and dank, but owe obedience to high rank. And when Earl Grey to me does call, I can't resist, but in must fall. Mine not to question, just to trust such orders from the upper crust. Lukewarm seeping, Pauline weeping sadly sees him melt away. Hadn't planned it, cannot stand it, makes a firm resolve that day. Never more shall crumb be wasted and dissolved while yet untasted. I will choose a humbler tea that does not bid so ruthlessly. No more high up and low down, never again shall servant drown. None should rise while others sink, nor injustice pollute my drink. This manifesto I avow, and to it firmly set my brow. Though victory may be hardly won, I pledge myself to it from now on. Between both cup and plate there'll be socialistic equality. <laughs> One last poem to finish. habit which no one else can see. I keep not biting people and they don't know it's me. They can't tell what I'm thinking and I'm not going to tell. I'll just keep on not biting them. I do it oh so well. I love my little hobby. I practice all the while. The people I'm not biting are oblivious. I just smile. Thank you.